Hey guys, while I was copying the one terabyte to five terabyte, it got me thinking about something I should mention, which is that, um, again, this is the Xbox One X provided by JP that you're going to see in this particular video. And I skipped the step of showing you the system working before I made the copy to the five terabyte drive. And it just reminded me that I can't stress enough that if you want to go to a five terabyte system, you have to have a working drive. You can't just go directly to a non-standard drive. You have to have a working 500 gigabyte drive, one terabyte drive, or two terabyte drive. So in this particular video, this was a brand new Xbox One X that I opened up and already booted up. I already have my Xbox One X account added to it, and that's also important. You wanna make sure you boot it up, get your account added, install some games if you wanna install some games, um, although it'll make the copy process take a little bit longer but the system has to be up and running. So I skipped showing you that, but just know that this system was running. In fact, you're gonna see a bunch of other videos surrounding this video and you'll see this, this system in action. So we already that's already a given that the system works. So we're just upgrading it to five terabytes and I'm showing you the quickest way to get there. Hey guys, this is where the fun begins. So we have our one terabyte Xbox One X drive here removed from the system. So we're gonna get it out of this caddy so that we can then, you know, have a little plastic piece, not to be forgotten. Um, just to mention too on this, there's these little, you can see there's two dots here and a line versus a line on the top. And it matches up with the bottom of this piece. So when you're trying to put this back together, it's pretty clear as to the direction that it should go. Like that. Okay. Anyway, so what we're gonna do to get the drive out of the caddy is remove the four outer screws. If you're gonna be using a two terabyte or smaller drive, then those are the only screws that you're gonna to have to worry about. And I'll show you once we start to fit the five terabyte drive, the changes you have to make to this caddy. Okay, so at this point, with those screws out, this actually separates so you could take this completely off and then you know, the connector will still be in the drive or you can pull the drive out first. It doesn't really matter too much, but um, yeah, so there you go. So what we're going to do now is hook this drive up to our PC. Well, here, let me show you. So I'm going to hook up two drives. So I'll switch directly to the desktop view here, but we have our five terabyte drive here and we have our one terabyte drive here. So this is going to be our new drive. And uh, just again, to illustrate the size difference here, it's mainly the height. So you can see the new five terabyte drive is pretty much twice the height. So seven millimeter, 15 millimeter. Okay, so we're gonna switch to our desktop view here. And we're going to run disk management. And this way you guys can see the drives getting connected. Okay, so first we'll hook up our five terabyte drive. Okay, so that's the five terabyte drive. And now we're gonna hook up our one terabyte drive. Okay, so Uh, again, I apologize for the notifications. I've had a couple people complain about the notification sounds. So I'll turn that volume down a little bit. I think I have the desktop sound actually shut off, but you'll probably hear the sounds coming through the microphone on the speaker. And I'll try to continue to turn it down. There. So in this particular case, what we want to do is, well, this is our brand new disk we just took out. So there's a little warning here. I think it's because the drive, oh yeah, okay. The drive is not initialized. That just means that it's brand new out of the package. And this is our one terabyte drive here. Okay, so we can see that both drives are attached as disk three and disk four. Um, now, the reason I hooked up the five terabyte first is that when we remove this drive later, we'll be able to access the, the disk three without having to disconnect it. I'll show you what I mean by that in just a little bit. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna need is our script. So what we're gonna do is go to Firefox and the link 
that you see here is in the description of this video. I'm going to download the file and we'll just save it. This is the latest 6.1 version of my script. I certainly recommend that you do that. I still have left the 5.0 version out there in some of the links and some of the older videos. It works fine and some of those older videos reference that script which is why I left that there. The newer version 6 of the script is a bit different. So rather than confuse people by the video not going along with the script, I've decided to leave the 5 there. But I definitely recommend viewing my newer videos and downloading my newer script. So here's our download here. Now I have 7-zip on my computer. I recommend you download that as well. And we're going to say open archive and here's our directory. So we're going to, we're going to select that. We're going to say extract. And instead of extracting it to downloads, I'm going to put it on my desktop. I'm going to say OK and OK. And here is our exported file, or folder rather. And it's from here that we're going to run the script. Now I recommend you can, you can basically go, drill into here and get to our create Xbox One drive and run the script directly here. Uh, I recommend not doing that because if you have a problem with the script, it will just close the window that you have open. So instead, I would recommend right-clicking the Start menu. In this case, I'm going to pick PowerShell, um, but basically you want to pick the admin version of it, or the Run as Administrator version that will sometimes be referred to as. Okay. So now what we'll do here is we'll bring up Disk Management, and then we'll bring up PowerShell so you can see the disk activity as it goes along here. Let me make this so we can see both at the same time. There. So there you can actually see disk 3 and disk 4. Okay, so what we want to actually do is get to our script. Now, since it's on the desktop, we want to go to C, and we go to Users. And in this case, I'm logged in as Xfix, and then Desktop. Okay, then we want to go to Xbox. Usually that's all you need to type, and then you hit Tab. If you have something else named Xbox on your desktop, keep hitting Tab, and it'll change to the proper directory. We want to go to the Win directory, and we'll hit Enter on that. Okay, I left out the CD, so this is a common mistake with the command line, is, is leaving things out. So we'll put a CD in front, because we're actually going to go to that directory. There we go. And we can type a dir just to see the contents of this directory, just to make sure everything that we're looking for is there. And see, even I make mistakes. I use the command line all the time, and I still forget things. All right, so in this case, we want to start typing create xbox drive.bat. And again, I hit tab there to complete. And we'll hit enter. And here we can see the version that we're running. It'll show it up here in the top, but you also see it here. We want to be running the 6.1 version of the script. Okay, we're going to press any key to continue. And this is when it basically changes over to using the English language. It'll warn you there are two checks that are run here. It makes sure you have administrator privileges and to make sure you have the right English language installed. It won't change, it changes the language for this script, but not for your system in general. So when this is all finished, it puts everything back to the way it was before. Okay, so the process for copying our one terabyte drive to our five terabyte drive is to use option B here. And then we want to choose our source disk. So in this case, our source disk is the one terabyte disk four. It checks to see if this is a C drive. If I picked uh, basically disk one here, it would have seen that that's the C drive and it would have complained and not allowed me to do that. Now it wants our target drive. So in this case, our target drive is disk three. Again, checks to make sure it's not the C drive. And it checked to see if there was anything on the disk. It's completely blank, but either way, it's going to ask you or, or warn you that it's going to erase everything on the disk. So we'll say yes to continue. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to a 5 terabyte drive. You might be going to a 2 terabyte, or you could even go to a smaller 500 gigabyte or any other size. Um, so if it's any of the standard sizes, then you would select A, B, or C. If you're auto-sizing it, you can select any one of these here. Now, 
auto size does just that it auto sizes so if I pick D E or F it'll do the right thing in terms of the five terabyte drive it'll auto size it and use as much of the space as it can however if I pick D E or F the difference is the header it puts on the drive makes the Xbox one think it's a standard 500 one terabyte or two terabyte however you'll still be able to utilize the space and in actuality it won't really change the functionality of the drive so if, in this case, if we're upgrading for one terabyte drive, it's safe to pick E here if you want to continue to make your Xbox think that it's running a one terabyte drive. For larger than two terabyte, I usually just select option F here, but it really doesn't matter. What this mostly has to do with is if you reset your system, the Xbox One will try to reset it to one of these three sizes um, and it will actually fail. And I've done a video about that too. I'll link that in the description about actually resetting uh, the non-standard drive size, like a five terabyte that we're using here. Okay, you can already see here that it's already partitioned everything. And here's the, uh, the main amount of space that we're going to be getting. As you can see, that's in gigabytes, so that's 4,557 gigabytes we'll be getting, as opposed to the default 781 gigabytes that the Xbox One originally, the Xbox One X originally shipped with. Just let the script do its thing, and don't worry about the many notifications you're going to get. Okay, guys, so at this point, it's going to ask you that, uh, basically, it's going to warn you that it's about to do the copying from the source to the destination disk, uh, which in this case is the goal, of course, of what we want to do. But this is where things can take time. So we're going to hit a yes to continue. Now, if something went wrong with the partitioning of the new disk, you would have not seen this copy process start. Instead, you get a message as to what went wrong in which case just restart everything you just did here so basically let the script finish and then rerun the script again uh, for the most part I've had I'd say maybe 90% success on the first try with this script but Windows being Windows even though everything is scripted and you run the same commands each time sometimes things don't run as they they are planned to run uh, that's why I still maintain the Linux version of the script. It's, I'd say the Linux script itself, if you, as long as you're running the proper commands, is usually 100% reliable. Windows, on the other hand, not so much. But for the most part, if you run it a second time, it'll work that second time. So I guess maybe in, in two tries, you'll get 100% success in one try less than that, but um, not much less. Anyways, so we'll let this copy. Uh, I am copying... About 100 gigs from one drive to the other. Shouldn't take too long using USB 3. I'm using my SATA to USB 3 cables, but you can use any method you need to get two drives hooked up to your system at the same time. But the actual hardware that I'm using will be linked in the description of this video. All right, so I'll let this run and uh, I'll fast forward through the rest of this.
Okay guys, so there we go. That's uh, the copy process is complete. We're still not completely done yet. As you can see here, we have a bunch of temporary names on things. But the first portion of getting the one terabyte copied over to the five terabyte is done. So we're gonna finish this up here. So once you have the new drive set up and the data copied, we want to disconnect our original drive for the next step. This is important because you can't have two finished Xbox One X drives connected at the same time. So what we're going to do here is safely eject the basically the UVWXY, the official drive. And with any luck, that'll just work. It did. Great. So at this point, I physically disconnected the one terabyte drive. Okay, so now we'll just hit the up arrow on our keyboard and we're going to rerun the script a second time. We're going to choose, this time we're going to choose the C option, so the fixed GUID values without formatting the drive. And we're going to pick our disk. In this case, it's disk 3. Uh, that's why I mentioned earlier, if you put the official drive in first, I'm sorry, if you put the new drive in first and the official drive in second, when you remove the official drive, the new drive will be in the right position. Otherwise, we'd have to eject both disks and then reattach the new drive because we, want, we need to make the new drive disk 3 instead of disk 4. It's more of an issue with the script than anything else. But anyways, all right, so... We selected the F option earlier, so we'll select the F option again. And you'll basically see this time it's updating all the GUID values to make it official, but also it's going to change the names of each of these partitions. Okay, so this is what we wanted to see here. Uh, basically, it outputs the current status of the existing drive. We can see it's an auto size two terabyte. And by that, user content is in the fifth position here on the disk. Uh, but all the names look okay. There's no D in front of the names anymore. And uh, you could check against the readme file. Basically, this guy here to make sure that all your GOID values are correct. But uh, at this point, just press any key to finish the script. This puts back the whatever the default language was on the system. In my case, it was already English, so there isn't much. Um, the script basically doesn't do much of anything. Okay, but at this point, we have a disk, and I mistakenly thought something had gone wrong in the past. What you can do here is you can pick Action, refresh and you'll see all the proper values here now but at this point we can just eject our brand new drive there we go so now we're ready to put the new drive into our Xbox One X system okay so we have our five terabyte drive here and we're gonna put it in I'm just gonna put it in the system as is so you guys can see the issue with a larger drive and I just want to note I mentioned this in one of my other videos but there's a breather hole right here on this drive it's important that this never gets covered in fact there's a little usually there's a little warning sticker I don't see it on this one yeah so on the one terabyte drive that comes with your Xbox one there's a little note I'll show you a close up but it says do not cover breather hole on this one it doesn't mention that um, but it has one of those holes nonetheless Okay, so what we're going to do though, we have the cable attached here. We're going to put this in our tray, uh, like so. There's just a couple holes there to line up so that the connector actually is held in by more than just the connector to the hard drive. And we're going to put one screw just to hold this together. Uh, there are four screws, of course, normally, but since we're going to take it right apart again, I don't want to waste your time. There we go. This is all holding together. 
So what I'll show you here is we're going to, it's hard to do one handed, but I'm going to put this disc in its location here, the tray in its location so that it sits there. And then I'm going to connect up our first our power connector, which is the, the one to the right, and then our actual data connector. So now everything's hooked up. And the optical drive doesn't actually have any screws that go through it. It just rests right on top of the hard drive. And I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see this, but let's see if I can get a good angle there. Just light a little bit, fortunately. Yeah, you can kind of make it out there. I'll show you a close-up picture of this too. Unfortunately, my camera can't focus on this all that well. Um, but the these two uh, units are resting right on top of each other. And that's an issue. In fact, um, if I did a comparison between how far this sits down, this actually sits fine. Um, you could leave this as it is. Uh, but you run the risk of the the five terabyte drive failing in the future because if you cover that breather hole, you'll start having disk issues. And generally, the issue you'll have is eventually the, the head will crash on the hard drive. I actually had someone send me a system because they had painted the top of their hard drive and had covered that breather hole. And two weeks later, the drive had completely failed and they weren't sure why. And that was the reason why. So I recommend what I'm going to show you here. You can do whatever you want, whatever you find to be your better solution. But Basically, my goal is to have the, the hard drive still mounted in the system so that it doesn't move around just like it does with the caddy. Um, with this bottom caddy piece, this is the four screw holes that attach to the case. But that's what we're going to be sacrificing here. So what I recommend doing is pulling these four large-headed screws out. And you can see there's actually these additional four mount points. Um, not sure why. But there is, maybe there was some, the idea is, is there's some flexibility for changing the case in the future, I don't know. But you can use those holes in the same manner that you can use these other guys. Now, you'll be losing those mounting points, so you'll have basically four screws left over. The, uh, they look like this, this is the, the screws that normally attach the uh, caddy to the bottom of the case. So hey, you're gaining some parts out of this, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to use these wider screws to now mount this drive. So with those four screws removed, we just pull this tray up and disconnect it. Now, a part of this tray is there is a, a some rubber mounts there, which basically uh, help with vibration, either from the disk or the system itself. We're going to lose that, but most desktop systems and most computer systems in general um, don't have that, uh, don't have rubber mounts. They just basically attach directly to the case. So I don't think this is a big loss there. Um, sure, it is a more compact system. So, I mean, that's the one thing you're losing. I'm just going to point that out. So if you're not comfortable with that, then, you know, don't do it. Um, personally, I, I don't think you're sacrificing much in that case, but, um, yeah, so there we go. So now what we're going to do is put our hard drive in again, and this time we don't have to worry too much about it resting in place. We just put it down and we're going to connect our connectors just to have them to help hold the drive in place while we flip this thing over. Okay. We'll rest down our drive and Make sure everything is disconnected. I think I have the network cable and the video cable still connected. Okay, so let's flip this guy over completely. And now we're going to screw down our hard drive. So we're going to have to lift this up a little bit. Try to put this more into focus there. Um, and we'll let the, the optical drive just sort of rest there on the on the table, which is fine. And what we're going to do here is line up some of those four holes I showed you earlier. And it doesn't really matter too much which ones you use. 
Um, I used... I could only get... So I think you could get three screws in, um, but I was only able to get two really easily. So I, I'm using basically... Here's our pattern of four. It's going to be hard to make out. But there's one here, one here, one here. Actually, they, they all fit pretty well now that I really get a good look at it. Um, so maybe I'll attach them all. But you can, again, this is sort of your own discretion. Yeah, so in this case, I mean, hey, I recommend if you can put all the screws in, great. Because that way you have them in the system still. And you're less apt to lose them later if you decide that you want to put your Xbox One X back to stock later. So we're going to get all these started here. And we'll finish tightening them up. Okay, so let's get everything started pretty good. So we're going to finish tightening everything down. As it stands, there you go. So I was able to get all four screws to sit pretty easily. And now the hard drive itself is secure. So we can take our hand off of it, it's good to go. Um, although <laughs> I would recommend putting the additional three screws in the hard drive to the caddy, which I forgot to do. Uh, I'll just do that off camera. But I, mainly what I wanted to show you, so make sure you put the, the four screws back in on the hard drive. But anyways, at this point we should be able to test the system and then I'll show you one more shot at the end to, to show you that I can get the case back together again. Hopefully I can. But what I'll also try to show you here really quick, again, it's going to be blurry, but I'll show you a close-up of, uh, of, of this solution as well. So now you can clearly see, though, even though it's a little blurry, you can clearly see there's space between the hard drive and the optical drive. Now let me... There we go. See that? So you can see there's some space. There's not as much as there was with the original one terabyte drive, but there's enough that the, the breather hole won't give you a problem. As long as it's able to get some air, that's all it needs. All right, so we should be just about ready to try this out. Now, um, oh, yeah, here, so let's, uh, yeah, okay. So the only thing I need to do is put the, and what do you call it? the bottom of the case where you attach the buttons. Whenever I do the testing, I like to make sure everything's attached. I, you could probably get away without uh, basically this attached because I'd only be missing the, the infrared receiver. And this is the eject button for the, the drive. I think you could get away without actually attaching this plate. I'm just going to do it to show you that it can be done with it in this condition. And when I do my speed test, I'll do this in a similar fashion. But we're going to just attach this flex cable to the front of the motherboard here. Okay. So, um, at this point, we'll try out our drive here. Apologize for my giant head in the way. Uh, but there we go. Okay, so we should be ready to test. So let's uh, bring this in. Okay, and I'll show you this powering up. Oop, let me open my uh, capture here. go. My usual capture card issues there. You can only do 720p. Okay, but there you go. So you can see it boots right up. Got 
got uh, controller here. I'm going to go to settings. And I'll just show you the storage. And there you go. So we actually do have three games on the system right now. Those are the three games I'm going to be using for my speed test. So this is all a part of that. So basically I'm going to put back in the one terabyte and I'm going to compare the speed of the one terabyte versus the five terabyte. And then I also have it copied to uh, an SSD as well and an SSHD. So we'll have a bunch of different tests for you. And uh, so let me just go back. Well, here, let's uh, load a game up. So in this case, we'll load up Tomb Raider. This is one of the games that I will be testing. And we'll just show you the game loading up here. And then uh, I'm going to put back the system, uh, put together the system again. I guess I can do that on camera. Um, whether or not I'll keep the footage, I guess we'll see. But um, you can see the game loads there. I'll hit start just to bring up, show you that we could continue the game here. So there you go. So uh, that's a 5 terabyte Xbox One X. So I'm going to quickly show you the case back together or show you putting the top case on with the new screw configuration and also put those hard drive screws back in. In fact, I'll, I'll probably do it all here and just make the video a little longer. Why not, right? Um, but at this point, you've seen all you need to see. You can see I changed the LED to blue, by the way. You can see it flashing there. Um, here, let me stretch this out. Okay, and so we'll get right to it here. Let's disconnect stuff. A little annoyed that I forgot to put those hard drive screws in. So maybe what we'll do is skip to the point where we have, we're basically here again. So I'll pull these screws out, put the hard drive screws back in, and then come back to this point and then show you putting everything back together again. All right, so moment of truth. So the only change here in our case is those screws on the top. So you can see they add a little extra height. So let's see how difficult it is to get the top case on. And I'm doing this for the first time on camera. So if I start swearing, you'll know that I'm not happy with how things went. Uh, so I usually put, oops, sorry, I usually put the left side in first. There's these strange notch things on either side, but because of the way there's an overhang on the left side. It's easier to do that side first, um, but it's also a little bit tricky again because you got to get it over the connectors, and, and it's more work than I think it should be. But anyways, there you go. So that was probably one of the easiest times I've ever done that. Um, so we'll put in our two screws in the back. I've done that a million times too, and then half the time getting those connectors in right is still tricky. You know you're good because it just uh, it just feels good, uh, feels like it attached properly. So you can see that's what it should look like. And also these screws wouldn't go in if you didn't have it down um, or attached correctly. Okay, so there you have it. So that's our system all put back together. You know, the hard drive is right here. Seems to be fine. There's no noticeable bulge from the screws. Um, there's, there's usually a little bit of added space between the outer case and the, the metal shell. So either way, it's good. So we're going to boot this up one more time. And um, just so you're clear, this is what, what's left over is uh, this piece of the caddy and these four screws. So I'd put them in a baggie or some sort of place just to hold on to them. So if you ever need to go back to your original drive, you can put everything back the way it was originally. So I guess we have the hard drive left over too. So let's hook this up again. And then uh, just make sure that it boots up. 
Just something you'd want to do anyways, right? Because you want to be sure that you're everything worked out. Hey guys, sorry about that quick cut there. I had the alt button on my computer accidentally held down. So when I went to resize this window, it wasn't resizing properly. Okay, anyway, so what we're gonna do next is just one more time, we're gonna boot this up with everything back together. And you'll be able to see that nice blue LED. And we'll let this get to the desktop. I hope I hooked up the right video cable. Looks like I actually did. Yay. Okay. So there you have it. The 5 terabyte Xbox One X. Uh, this is the first one of these that I've done. But I'm not the first one to do it. And I appreciate all the, the new subscribers and all the comments I get on my videos. Everything's great. I, I feel like I got a real community going here. And I try to answer, as you'll see if you've ever commented my videos or you look in the comments, I try to answer every, every question I can. Some of the more complex questions I don't always get to right away, but I do eventually get to them. Um, but yeah. So here, I'll show you this one more time. And then, we gotta cut it. Okay, so there you go. So, a five terabyte Xbox One X. See you guys in my next video.